Hello everyone, this video is going to be a brief demonstration of Yoroi's implementation of SIP30. So SIP30 is a Cardano improvement proposal in order to get Cardano DAP bridges to be um, consistent across the board. And so DAPs can use the wallet's APIs and their behavior should be predictable as defined by SIP30. So as long as the wallet is following the SIP30 standard, the code for the DAP should be extremely reusable across all wallets. This allows the DAP to let users choose which wallet they want to use. So just to give a brief demonstration of the SIP30 APIs, I've prepared a Cardano DAP example. Note that this is for testnet only, and so don't go on this website and connect a mainnet wallet. This is because the functions are created just at, for example purposes, so they don't really have any utility. If you connect a mainnet wallet to them, you might put your funds at risk. So the first thing a DAP has to do is to request access to my Yoroi wallet. So let's do that now. And if we enter our spending password. OK, now the DAP has connected to my Yoroi wallet. This gives the DAP some level of control over my wallet and exposes some useful APIs in order to build the DAP upon. So let's go through each one of these and I'll give a demonstration and then explain them uh, briefly. So is enabled, somewhat self-explanatory, simply checks if my Yoroi connection is enabled. And as you can see, it's true here. Now, get account balance, of course, gets my uh, wallet's balance. Now, this is the number of Lovelaces that I own. And if I had any NFTs or any native tokens, it would show up in the assets part here. Get unused addresses it's, is somewhat interesting. This is uh, necessary because Cardano wallets have this system where each transaction generates a new wallet address to use. This is so that wallet users have a higher level of privacy because if each transaction has a different address, it's much more difficult to trace back transactions to the wallet's owner, it looks like each of these transactions are made by someone different. And so these unused addresses will be controlled by my wallet and should be used uh, as transactions are made. So if I made a few more transactions, it may go up this list and use uh, the next unused address. Get used address. Uh, this is here for a similar reason. It's um, the wallet addresses that I've already used for transactions. Uh, however, it's not that these addresses no longer exist or are, are discarded. I can definitely still send funds to this these addresses and they would still be uh, usable by my wallet. They are These addresses are still controlled by my wallet. However, it might be there might be some privacy concerns because maybe I've already used this address before and if another transaction uses the same address maybe that person knows who I am. Get change address uh, is necessary because UTXOs are have to be spent atomically so if I had a UTXO that was worth 100 ADA and I only wanted to send someone 50 ADA, I would have to send the entire 100 ADA and then give myself 50 ADA back in change. And so the 50 ADA of change should go to this change address, which is also controlled by my wallet. And every unused address that is generated should come 
also come with its own change address. So get reward addresses, this is also somewhat self-explanatory, it's uh, for staking rewards. So if I was staking some ADA to some Cardano node, the Cardano node should send the staking rewards to these reward addresses. Get UTXOs, arguably one of the more important APIs for dApp development. These would be the UTXOs that are owned by my wallet. Now these would be spendable by my wallet if uh, the dApp wanted to make me sign a transaction that spent these. As you'll notice, the receiver of these UTXOs might not necessarily be the same address as I've mentioned before the wallet generates a new address for every transaction. And so even though all of these UTXOs are owned by my wallet, they may not be controlled by exactly the same address. Get UTXOs API also have a, has a very important functionality, which is UTXO selection. So let's say I wanted to spend 100 ADA, which would be 100 million Lovelaces. So we can put that in and then we get UTXOs. This should generate a list of UTXOs uh, recommended by the wallet to use that add up to at the very least this number of Lovelaces. So it is pretty much ensured that the UTXOs given by this API will add up to at least this value. Um, it could be more, but as long as my wallet has sufficient funds, it would always add up to at least this much. Now, the experimental APIs are very interesting. So this is a experimental API called create TX. Um, experimental APIs means that it is only available for that wallet. So we can go into SIP30 and we can go under experimental API. SIP30 basically gives a way um, for any wallets to have their own custom functionality. So your Roy wants to have a experimental API called CreateTX. This essentially takes in a JSON uh, transaction and passes everything and creates a valid transaction just from that JSON itself. It makes it much cleaner, uh, might make the code cleaner. If you wanted to use this, uh, note that it's an experimental API and so it may not be available in other wallets and may not only be available in your ROI. So SIP30 allows uh, wallets to still be uh, somewhat customizable while still being consistent uh, for the main APIs that are given. So uh, moving on we can also sign transactions. Note that signing transactions always will give us a pop-up. It is not possible for a dApp to sign transactions using your wallet without your permission. So only if I enter the correct spending password, the uh, wallet will sign this transaction here. So this transaction simply sends some funds to another wallet address that I've defined previously. Now get collateral UTXOs is, uh, is needed for Plutus transactions. So Plutus transactions require a collateral UTXO which will be burned in the case of script failure. So the reason why this is necessary is because failed transactions don't actually appear on the blockchain. So without collateral UTXOs, someone could spam the network with failing transactions for free and that wouldn't be very good. So collateral UTXOs are needed. So if um, the transaction fails, this collateral UTXO will be 
burned and you will be punished for it. Um, this sign data API is simply a method for your wallet to sign some arbitrary data. So we could, for example, put whatever you wanted, like ABC123, and we would sign the data. Of course, our wallet pops up again because uh, we cannot sign anything without notifying the wallet owner and uh, the owner giving permission. So this signature essentially is uh, can be used to verify that I indeed signed a message ABC123. And so one of the examples that I always give for this, um, for why this API might be useful is let's say I was playing rock, paper, scissors with someone over the internet. I could sign a message that says rock and Let's, let's do that now. And then I would give them this signature. This signature does not actually uh, reveal that I signed rock. It only can be used to verify that I indeed signed rock previously. And so someone else could perhaps sign paper, give me their signature, and then uh, later we will reveal all the signatures and, and our rock or paper decision and we can verify that I indeed chose rock and he actually did choose paper and then he would win the game. Of course this is not a extremely useful example but um, I do hope that maybe you can think of something more creative, a more creative way to use this uh, API. So uh, we can also sign transactions that actually do something so let's uh, sign a transaction that mints an NFT. So let's mint an NFT here. And once this transaction is signed successfully, we can also check that this is the currently signed transaction and we can submit it to the chain. Of course, the uh, transaction is now submitted and we can go into our Yoroi wallet and check that we indeed submitted a transaction and if we look into the details of the transaction it simply gives ourselves a NFT with some minimal amount of ADA required in the UTXO. And uh, there's also metadata uh, information in this transaction. So NFTs should always follow the SIP25 uh, NFT metadata standard and this would be the structure of the NFT uh, metadata. This 721 tag is uh, very important because uh, this indicates that it is a tag for an NFT and we should always follow the standard, um, the SIP25 standard for NFTs so that uh, NFT marketplaces perhaps could pass the metadata and your NFT would be valid on uh, all the available NFT marketplaces. If you were to not follow the NFT uh, metadata standard, then your NFT might not be a valid uh, NFT according to other uh, NFT marketplaces. So. Now that, let's check, okay, so our transaction has been confirmed and if we check our account balance now, we should be able to see that, yep, so we have assets here, so that we have won this, whatever this NFT is. We can also get the metadata from Yoroi backend uh, and display it on our DAP. So as we can see, this gives us the metadata of the asset that I just mentioned. So let's say that it had some image data here. Maybe I could display it uh, as an image here or whatever I wanted for my DAP. Now Plutus Transactions is also uh, a possibility. I've prepared and deployed a script on the testnet beforehand that simply checks whether or not the datum is equal to the redeemer. So let's say that uh, I 
deploy a UTXO that uh, puts it into a script where the datum is 10. And so we'll just do this. In fact, this gives uh, two ADA to the script. Now we have successfully signed it, so send to script, and we'll submit this send to script transaction. And it's submitted. So, yep, we can see that a transaction has been submitted here. So, Plusus transactions essentially uh, allow us to put lock some funds in a UTXO with a script uh, that protects the funds. So in order to get this two ADA out of this uh, script here, uh, I would need to give a valid redeemer that passes all the checks of the script. So now that this has confirmed, I can try and enter a redeemer that doesn't pass the script. So let's say 11 and we will do this and this transaction should fail when I submit it and indeed it does so we can see that the data is an integer of 10 and the redeemer is an integer of 11 now obviously the script checks whether or not these are equal and of course 10 is not equal to 11 so it uh, fails now let's try it with a redeemer of 10 this time And we've succeeded signing it, so we should submit it. And this should pass. Yep. And we can see that the transaction has indeed been submitted successfully. And if we check our wallet, wait a little bit, and uh, there should be a submitted transaction. Maybe something. Ah, okay. <laughs> For some reason, that took a long time to appear, but we can see that this is a transaction that spends the two ADA that we locked in the script and gives ourselves the funds back. That would be it for this video, and uh, if you would like, you can play around with this um, DAP also, and the code will be available on GitHub. And uh, if you would like to take a look. And yeah, thanks a lot for listening. And I'll see you guys next time.